Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Rory and I'm coming to you from Jakarta, Indonesia. I want to continue to talk about the issue of true and false conversion. Uh, we have uh, a large growth in the church over the years in the U.S., outside of the U.S., and many countries. We've seen the expansion of Christianity, and uh, it's a very positive thing in many ways. Of course, the, we want the name of Jesus to be known more and more. We want the name of Jesus to be lifted up. We want him to be, uh, you know, come, become a household name in all the world, and that's, that's only good and true and right. However, as Christianity spreads, it's very important the quality of Christianity that we're spreading. In other words, you know, we don't, what we don't want is the whole world to become what we would call a nominal Christian world. What a nominal Christian is simply somebody who's a Christian in name only, but not actually in word and deed. So in other words, with their lips, they name the name of Jesus. They may have been baptized. They may go to church sometimes. Uh, they may even be quite active in church, but they've never really come to a true life life-changing encounter with Jesus, and so they actually continue in their sins. So those are what we call nominal Christians. Indonesia has many nominal Christians in certain parts, Papua um, and uh, other areas. Manado is another uh, region where there's a lot of Christian in name, but uh, not so many who are actually born-again Christians. And so uh, what we find is when people are Christian in name only, they go to war with their neighbor. I mean, they actually literally take up arms and fight against the Muslims, and uh, they do many other things. The pastors have a reputations of drinking and smoking and things like that. So that's, that's something that would cause the name of the Lord to actually be blasphemed, right? Remember Paul said to the Jews and Romans, he said, it's actually because of you that the name of the Lord is blasphemed among the Gentiles. So in that sense, then, it's not a good thing if the Christianity that's spreading is only a nominal form of Christianity because it's, it's not only not getting people saved, but it's causing the unbelievers to blaspheme the name of the true Lord. So true conversion is, is very crucial. It's very important. Uh, and so for that, we have to understand that the number one important thing is not to get somebody to say a sinner's prayer, to respond to an altar call, or to get baptized in water. Those are all secondary things. You can have somebody say a sinner's prayer, you can have somebody respond to an altar call, and you can have somebody baptized in water, but that doesn't necessarily change anything at all. So those are really all secondary issues. I remember when I was a sinner, before I had truly been saved, whenever I had troubles, I knew about the sinner's prayer, I knew that Jesus was good, so I would pray, Jesus, come into my heart. I did that numerous times, and there was actually no change that came in my life. You would say, well, you didn't really mean it. Yes, I did really mean it. I really hoped that Jesus would come into my heart, change my life, and give me a better life. The problem was, and the reason why there was no change, is because as far as I understood, having Jesus come into my heart and come into my life had very little to do with the way that I was living. And this is where nominal Christianity comes in. You see, when we preach a gospel that really only deals with blessing, better life, uh, prosperity, uh, you know, healing, uh, favor for your work, favor for your marriage, favor for your every area of life. Well, what we're preaching is a gospel that never really deals with the issue the gospel came to deal with. We're dealing with the secondary issues. Those are all secondary issues. I don't say they're not issues. I only say that they're secondary issues. And in fact, on the day of judgment, they will appear to be absolutely nothing because once eternity begins, those things have no value whatsoever. So when we're preaching the gospel, it's, it's really a crime if we focus on those issues as the main message and we kind of steer away from the heart of it all, which is a true change of heart where we come to recognize that we are sinners in the eyes of a holy God and where we understand that if we don't turn from our life of sin and cling to Jesus Christ as our Savior, that we will be doomed and we will be cast out of His presence forever. You see, when I truly changed, when I truly got saved, the difference was this. I heard the preaching of the gospel and the Holy Spirit convicted me of my sin. That was the first time I ever saw myself really as a sinner, even though I was a sinner. And I was probably a pretty good one at that. But I always saw myself as pretty good and better than other people, especially because I believed in God at least. And a lot of people didn't even have that. But in, in God's presence, that's also meaningless. We just, we see ourselves 
uh, in, a, in a false light. But when the true light of God came in, I saw myself as very sinful and I saw myself as in a very dangerous position. And I saw the reality that I was going to perish and go to hell if I didn't change my life and begin to truly follow Jesus from that moment on. So when the Holy Spirit comes to lead somebody to Christ, the first thing he points out is not look at all the benefits you'll get as you follow Jesus. You'll have a big house and, and, a, and a better car and a better marriage and I'll heal you and all that. That's just really not the issue at all. <laughs> In fact, I think that if somebody focuses on those issues and makes that the central issue when preaching the gospel, hear me clearly, they are preaching a false gospel. You see, false teaching is not necessarily always what we say. Oftentimes, false teaching involves what we don't say. You see, you can preach some peripheral issues as the main thing and leave the main thing as peripheral issues or even unmentionable things. And you're not just kind of like you know, crafting the gospel in a way that you find culturally relevant. Actually, what you're doing is you are twisting and turning and changing the true gospel into something that fits in the idea of God that you have, which I'll tell you is an idol. In fact, that is the essence of preaching a false gospel. And that's what we see so much in, in, in the day that we live in. You have people on television, you have people in, in large churches, small churches as well, for that matter, all across the globe that are preaching a truncated or even a false version Virgin, version of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the result is you have false conversions everywhere. You have people that are coming to Christ for wrong motives. In other words, uh, what I mean by wrong motive is that they're coming for what they can get in the sense of temporal benefits or temporal blessings. The gospel is an eternal message. It's a, it's a message that deals with the sinful depravity and the lost condition of man, the eternity, the holiness, and the righteousness of God. It deals with God's justice and judgment against our wicked and sinful and fallen condition. And it deals with us being rescued out of, out of the hands of the devil, out of sinfulness, and in, being brought into God's light and being brought into eternal life, which does begin again now, but the eternal life that starts now, the issue is not material things or things of that nature. If it was, then the apostles would have been the richest men in the world, uh, but it dealt with a, a, a condition of the soul being brought into relationship with God and the power of death being broken and the power of sin being broken and, and people that were formerly sin, sinners and prodigals being adopted as children of the Father and being transformed into the image of His Son. That's the gospel. That's what the gospel of Jesus Christ does. Mm -hmm.